Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about ways in which you can manage the side effects of hormonal or endocrine therapy. Before I go on, I'd love to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. We put out three videos a week, so we are always putting out new content. So hormonal therapy, also called endocrine therapy, is used in people whose tumors have the estrogen and or the progesterone receptors on the tumor itself. It doesn't matter whether somebody still has functioning ovaries or not, it doesn't matter their gender, uh, hormonal therapy is very effective in treating hormone receptor positive breast cancer. We'll link to our video about hormone receptors so you can check that out if you want more information. Hormonal therapy works by either decreasing the amount of estrogen in your body or interfering with the way estrogen uh, attaches to the estrogen receptor. So I'll talk about three different types of therapy that work in one of those two ways. So the selective estrogen receptor modulators like tamoxifen and raloxifene bind to the estrogen receptor so that the, your estrogen in your body can't get there and stimulate those cells to divide. The selective estrogen receptor modulators, in particular tamoxifen, that's the one we talk about the most, looks enough like estrogen that it sits in the estrogen receptor and now your estrogen can't get in there. It's occupied by tamoxifen. The selective estrogen receptor disruptors, or SERDs, include in particular Faslidex, given by injection, and this disrupts the relationship between estrogen and the estrogen receptor. So it's a lot like tamoxifen, but we have data that these drugs are very useful in people with advanced disease in combination with other therapy. We'll do another video on the selective estrogen receptor disruptors. The other class of drug is the aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors work in a different way. They block your body from making estrogen from the testosterone and other androgens in your body. So after we go through the change, after our ovaries stop working, or if we don't have ovaries, uh, they, we still make estrogen in other parts of our body and it's converted. The way our body makes estrogen is by converting androgens or what we call quote male sex hormones into estrogens. And the aromatase inhibitors block the production of estrogen through that pathway. So they lower the level of estrogen in your body. All three classes of these drugs have side effects. Placebos have side effects, so of course active drugs will have side effects as well. I'll start with the selective estrogen receptor modulators like tamoxifen. The most famous side effects of these drugs are hot flashes, night sweats, joint pains, vaginal discharge or dryness. Some people see hair thinning. And there's some other side effects like irregular menstrual periods in people who are menstruating. I'll get to how to manage those in just a moment. For the selective estrogen receptor disruptors, the SERDs, side effects are pain where the injection's been given. And generally, we give the injection in the medius part of your body, usually um, over the buttocks, so that there's more space to hold the medicine. And these can also cause... Uh, hot flashes and night sweats, and also some fatigue. And when we see dis sleep disruption because we're interfering with estrogen in your body, sleep disturbances are associated with hot flashes and night sweats. The other thing is the um, injection is usually given in combination with other therapies to people with more advanced disease. So the fatigue that people have from these medications can also in part be due to the cancer itself and other treatments that are given. I'm going to talk about the aromatase inhibitors now. The aromatase inhibitors cause more joint pains than tamoxifen. That's a, sort of the number one side effect. The medical term is arthralgias, arth referring to joints and algia referring to pain. We also do see night sweats, hair thinning, and vaginal dryness in particular. Because we're lowering the estrogen level, we also see some problems with things like urinary incontinence, mostly dribbling, not full-fledged incontinence, because the decrease in the estrogen thins the um, urethra. 
So that's the area that's the outlet for our urine. So people can have urinary symptoms as well. It's really possible you haven't heard about all of these. A lot of times when we're starting somebody on a medicine, we tell them the most common side effects. And then when they come back in and they tell us what they're having, we'll tell them, is that related to or not related to the medicine that we have them on? I think some people fear that if we give you too many side effects, you won't go on the medicine. But the reason I'm more parsimonious or selective in the side effects I talk about is because you can get information overload and then be led to believe you're going to get all those side effects. Most people do have one or more side effects, but most people can stay on these medications. We appreciate all the comments and questions you've put in around hormonal therapy and endocrine therapy. I would say, despite this list of side effects, you won't know if you're going to be somebody who does just fine on them or somebody who has side effects. And because they're reversible, trying the drug for three months and seeing how you feel is probably better than listening to all the complaints other people have about these medications. So when you, when you find somebody you want to be a partner with, if you're looking for a partner, we don't tend to get married right away. It's the same with these medications. Don't feel once you start it, you have to be on hormonal therapy for five to 10 years with no change or interruption. It's like dating the drug. If you've seen our comments before, I suggest dating the drug, see how you feel. It's about at three months when we decide whether we can put up with somebody's foibles or not. So I say, you know, stick it out for three months. By then, you'll usually be seeing your medical team, and you can talk about your side effects and ways to manage those. Next, I'm going to talk about how to manage some of the side effects I talked about. I'm not covering every single side effect here. We have other videos on some of the other side effects, like joint pains, for example. So let's talk about hot flashes and night sweats. I'm going to not talk about medications right now because medications to treat one side effect give you other side effects. And we always try to start with non-medication approaches. So things that people find very helpful are to dress in layers. And so you're wearing multiple layers. If you get a hot flash, you can take off some of the layers. If you get a cold sweat, you can add on a layer. Wearing cotton is very helpful, as opposed to synthetic fabrics, especially when you're trying to get a good night's rest. A lot of people find carrying a portable fan can be helpful. This can be battery operated or one you can charge in your USB port, or it can just be an old fashioned paper fan that you can get for about a dollar at a museum store. So there are lots of options just to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. You may need to negotiate with your sleeping partner the temperature of the room and the bedclothes, and that's something that they can watch this video so they can understand how bad these can be. Most of these side effects, for tamoxifen especially, tend to peak at three months and then after that subside. So if during the three-month dating period you're having a tough time, but you think you want to stick it out, they will get better, especially with tamoxifen. With the aromatase inhibitors, night flashes, night sweats, and hot flashes can also get better with time, but they tend not to as many in as many people. So hot flashes and night sweats, staying active can help avoiding smoking and avoiding th other things that affect our blood vessels, like, like smoking, alcohol, even cutting out caffeine can help a lot of people without you having to take another medication. We have a video on smoking cessation and ways to help you quit smoking if you're interested in doing that. So those are the key things for hot flashes that don't involve medications. In terms of vaginal dryness, understanding that this is going to get better when you're off of treatment, but knowing that sexual problems, vaginal dryness are very common whether or not you're on endocrine or hormonal therapy. So there are lots of options for you for lubrication. We generally recommend against using estrogen in the vagina or on the vulva. And that's because there's a fear that you could be absorbing estrogen into your system and that could sort of undo the effects of the medication. So in general, unless you're being seen by a specialist, we don't recommend vaginal estrogen tablets or creams. But there are a lot of other things that are natural. We do recommend a water-based lubricant, not a petroleum-based lubricant, but you can use things as simple as olive oil or vegetable oil, coconut oil. These are not petroleum-based, they are oil-based. 
And then there's, of course, the water-based lubricants that you can get at a pharmacy um, or um, even a grocery store that you can get to make your um, vaginal tissues and vulvar tissues feel less dry and sensitive. People who have vaginal discharge, in particular from tamoxifen, often tell me that this helps to have the additional lubrication. If this is a real problem for you, though, and you really dislike it, talk with your medical team about an alternative to tamoxifen, because it's not likely that that will go away. Tamoxifen can cause menstrual irregularities, as I mentioned. It's important that you make sure that you can't conceive if you're able to become pregnant when you're on tamoxifen, because it can cause birth defects. And we recommend that you not take tamoxifen if you're planning on having a child and that you not get pregnant if you're on tamoxifen. They should be far apart from each other by about three months to be extra safe. Joint pains, we have a special video on it, but movement is surprisingly and maybe paradoxically the most effective thing. You'll notice that if you're on an aromatase inhibitor, your joints will stiffen up. If you've been sitting for a long time, like a long car ride or watching TV for a very long time, staying active, doing morning yoga can be very helpful, applying heat. There are topical pain relievers like non-steroidal topical creams that can be really useful, um, but we generally recommend staying as active as possible. For any of these therapies, any side effects you have, it makes sense to notice what triggers them. So if you have hot flashes, notice did something precede it. Were you particularly anxious? Were you stuck in traffic? Were you uh, in a conflict? Sometimes we know that because the nervous system regulates our blood vessels and hot flashes are usually the result of dilation of the blood vessels, if you can figure out what gets your nervous system kind of amped up, you can sometimes control the triggers or help them subside more quickly. Knowing whether your joint pains are better or worse in the morning can be helpful because you can start to learn the pattern. And that's the time they tend to be the worst is in the morning. And then people tend to feel better as they get warmed up and start moving around. I want to talk about fatigue. It's not, you know, one of the top side effects we talk about with endocrine therapy. Same thing, the, another term is hormonal therapy. But when your sleep is disrupted and you're having hot flashes, how could you not have fatigue? What we recommend for fatigue is paradoxical again. It's getting outside and staying active. Try to avoid really long naps. If you take a nap, limit it to 20 to 40 minutes so you don't disrupt your sleep that night. Try to avoid anything that leads to fatigue. So marijuana, alcohol, other drugs can make us more tired. And the more you can eliminate those things from your system, the better. The last thing I'd like to talk about is nausea. And we see nausea sometimes with all of these medications, but we see it most with the selective estrogen receptor disruptors. Nausea can be really troubling. Knowing what triggers you and what helps the nausea can be really helpful. We do recommend you avoid strong scents. Figure out what scents make you feel sick to your stomach and what scents help. A lot of people find that they don't like being around scented lotions, perfumes, uh, think potpourri. And so we ask people, you know, you've probably seen in the treatment center, don't wear scented lotions because it really can bother people. Even shampoo that is scented can be a trigger for you or people you know who are on endocrine therapy or chemotherapy for that matter. Eat small meals, make sure you have enough fluids. You don't want the nausea to interfere with your hydration. You want to make sure that when you urinate, your urine is very pale in color, and that's how you know you're getting enough fluid. If you are still nauseated with all these recommendations, we have lots of medications that can help with nausea. Again, one medication to control the side effect of another always feels uncomfortable to me, but ginger can help. Ginger lozenges, ginger tea, candied ginger can help, and that's more natural. A lot of people feel that's more natural than being on medications. And finally, if any of these side effects are unmanageable and interfering with your quality of life, it is so important that you met, let your medical team know. Don't suffer in silence. We won't think you're a bad patient or a whiner. We want to help you, and if we don't hear from you, we can't provide the best care. I know I've covered a lot in this video. 
Don't forget to go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you want, drop a comment or a question. While we can't give medical advice, we can certainly validate your concerns or provide you with general information that uh, may be specific to your, to your case and other people like you going through the same thing. Thanks for contributing to the Yerba community and thanks for watching.